Hello, it is Wednesday, October 6th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. Today, we will be solving, of course, a Wednesday crossword, which might be a shade tougher than yesterday's, probably not as wacky as tomorrow's Thursday puzzle, which tends to be a bit more, uh, I don't know, complex, I suppose. Uh, but before that, a few things to mention. I do want to, again, quickly mention the Patreon campaign, which is how you can help sustain this channel, make a direct uh, bit of support that will help it continue as we as we go forward in time. So thank you to everyone who's done that. You can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve to see the various benefits, including um, bonus video solves, such as the first boss words um themeless league competition puzzle that I uh, solved. Well, the preseason puzzle went up. I've solved the first puzzle and that will be going up, I think on Saturday after the solution has been made available so I don't spoil anything. Um, and you get special access to the Discord server. And I wanted to make sure to mention that because there's something really nice that's gone on over on the Discord server in the other Crosswords channel, which is that Metanome has constructed three crosswords, his first crosswords he's ever constructed. He says, if anyone would like to try some crosswords I made after Chris Ramo's video made me want to give it a try, here's a few. The first two are themed, the third is themeless, and I promise they're all rebus free. And I've solved the first two of them. Uh, the first two do indeed have themes, they're quite clever. And the first one has a very British bent, so be beware of that if you are not coming from a British cultural context. Uh, the second one, less so. Uh, they both have clever themes. I've not yet solved the third. It was fun for me to, I, I, I played through the first crossword, which I, I really enjoyed. I thought it was very well put together and um, sort of <laughs> did a bit of role play as Will Shorts and gave him at a gnome a whole bunch of uh, feedback in the Discord about the, um, the way that the puzzle was clued, uh, which I hope was helpful. But anyway, if you're interested in solving some crosswords, from a first-time constructor, although I would say they were pretty impressive for a first-time constructor, to be to be honest. Uh, you can head over to the Discord server. You don't need to be a Patreon uh, contributor to do that. You do get uh, additional Discord access for being a Patreon con contributor, but the other Crosswords channel is public, so you can see these regardless of your Patreon status. And there's a link to both the, dis the Discord and the Patreon in the description field underneath the video. So well done, Meta... Uh, Metanome just wanted to call that out because I thought that was really nice. So let's move on to some clues from yesterday's puzzle. I think there are only two. So Bit and Brush says, Loving the series, from an art perspective, trompe l'oeil isn't just any optical illusion. It's a technique that makes it seem like the represented objects in two dimensions are actually presented in three dimensions. It's often used in still life, street and public art, and architecture. So there we go. That is... Uh, makes sense. And I think now that that's been said, I sort of think, oh, right, of course that's true. But I didn't uh, I didn't get there myself yesterday. I was thinking trompe l'oeil just referred to a general, a general optical illusion of any sort. And Behumeth says, a quick comment on IOU, uh, the phrase meaning literally I owe you money. You mentioned in passing that it's an acronym, but I thought that must not be right since it's phonetic. But the letters don't entirely stand for the words it's implying, otherwise it would be I-O-Y. I was curious if there was a term for this, as this sort of thing appears elsewhere, such as in text speak, C-U, the letters C-U for see you, I will see you. Uh, some suggested calling it a phonetic acronym, others, su others suggested it's a rebus, there's that word rebus again today. After some deeper digging, it turns out there's actually a term for it, and that is grammogram, or grammogram which is indeed a subset of rebuses. So there we go. I owe you a gramogram. Had no idea. Now I do. I'll try and remember that. <laughs> so thank you to Behumoth and Bit and Brush for those bits of knowledge. Appreciate it. And let's get on to the puzzle. We've been, we've been delaying it long enough. Why not solve a Wednesday crossword? In this case, one constructed by Jules Markey and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. Ready to get started? Okay. Uh, this will have a theme. We're still in the theme section of the week, which runs from Sunday to Thursday, so we'll keep a lookout for that. Animal, oh, and we could, I suppose, as we did yesterday, jump right down to here, yes, and indeed, as predicted, this is the square 
in the uh, across section in the lower southeastern quadrant of the grid that contains the revealer that explains how the theme works, typecasts in a way, or a hint to four squares in this puzzle. So typecasting is when an actor is cast uh, in, in a role that plays to past roles with which that actor is strongly associated. I don't know exactly <clears throat> how this is going to end up being filled, but we'll keep it in mind. There are four squares. I suppose it's useful to remember there are going to be four squares in this puzzle that in some way tie into the theme. If there are four squares as opposed to four answers, maybe there's a rebus, another, another mention of that word rebus. And a crossword, of course, a rebus is when you fill uh, one cell with more than one letter. But anyway, we don't know yet. Animal that's also a plant, question mark. Eh. Uh, oh, mole. Oh, uh, so a mole is, I'm sure most people watching know this, but a mole is slang term in, in intelligence for an agent, for a foreign agent that's been embedded in an intelligence service in order to pass intel back to their home intelligence service. And I believe that term was actually, does not derive from the intelligence services, but was actually coined by John le Carre, the uh, actually one-time intelligence officer who had a very, very long career as a, a spy fiction writer, really excellent novelist. I, uh, I just finished reading The Honorable Schoolboy, which is the sequel to Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, and it was, I thought, quite incredible. Anyway, here we have Morning Joe co-host Brzezinski. Uh, let's keep looking. Lyric versus, well, we know what those are. Is it a poem in a crossword? It's probably an ode. It's not always an ode, but it's probably an ode. A soup bulb, probably a leek. A bulb, a bulb is in an, you know, an onion bulb, a root vegetable, in this case, a leek. Sevilla's home, Sevilla's home, España, Spain? Because it's not spelled Seville, it's spelled Sevilla, maybe Sevilla. I don't know actually how it's pronounced in Spanish, but I, that looks to me like the Spanish spelling of Seville, so I'm guessing this is España. All right, here we have follower of the Kalends and the Nuns. Oh, is this Ides? So the Ides of March, for instance, refers to a particular day of the month, and I wonder if these words also refer to particular days of the month. Yeah, maybe the 13th and 14th in this case, or, or some other way of calculating it that lands on those often. So good advice during an emergency. This looks like keep, the first word here, keep something, keep your cool, keep, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. Obliquely, could be askance. If you sort of hint at something obliquely, you're kind of getting at it almost sideways, sort of askance at an angle. Yard blank, could be yard sale. A German pronoun, could be ein or der. Looks more likely to be Ein based on the, the cross here. Genghis Khan tactic. Um, not sure. Might delete that. I was I mean siege maybe, but I'm not sure. FDR job creating program. I think this came up recently. The WPA Works Progress Administration. I think. It was a Roosevelt, a FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, a New Deal, a New Deal program at WPA. They break the fourth wall. Asides, perhaps, in a uh, in a dramatic production, when a character sort of says something to the side, and it's really meant more for the audience than than an, another character in the play. Uh, they're sort of breaking the fourth wall. Um, holds could be has, I suppose. Always be my maybe, actress Wong. Oh, um, is it Ali Wong? That rings a bell. It's someone who's around these days. And I know that this, I don't even remember if it's a movie or a television program, but it's a recent one from Netflix, I think. So if one of the most ghostly could be the palest, how are plans coming along? What's maybe, what is this? Blank quam videri to be rather to be rather than to seem. Uh, so essa, I think, is to be in Latin. So that S would work there. 
how are plans coming along? What's, I don't know, not seeing it, sorry. Slid over a bit. Not sure, let's go back to the acrosses. Like some texts and cows. Well, some texts are sacred and some cows are sacred. Sacred cows, sort of un untouchable, I don't know, ideas, I suppose, is how it's often used. One literary source for Wagner's ring cycle. Um, the Eddas, what is that? Icelandic sagas? It's some Nordic folklore. I think the, I think the Eddas. Oh, German pronoun, ich. There we go. It wasn't ein order. Oh, no. Sorry. Ein, I completely misinterpreted this. I was thinking of German articles, such as a or the in English. But in fact, it's a pronoun. So it's ich or I. There we go. Sorry about that. I had the completely wrong thing in mind. So that does make the Genghis Khan tactic siege most likely. And to customize for gear up. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, to put up is to erect, as in a building or monument. Oh, good advice during emergency. Keep head. Keep, okay, so maybe there actually, there, there may actually be a rebus in this puzzle. Keep a level head? Keep a cool head? Could this be COO, coo? Oh, yeah, actually it could. So if this were... So if you're not familiar with the Rebus in the New York Times crossword puzzle, if you've not, we haven't had one of these in a while, I don't think. Rebus in the New York Times crossword refers to, as I said earlier, a cell that contains more than one letter. And you get there with the Rebus button and you can go in and out of Rebus mode. And if you, if you hit enter or on the phone, just sort of click elsewhere, or I think you can press the return on screen button and uh, you'll get out of that mode. You can put in as many letters as you as you like. I think you can put in quite a few. Yeah, it goes on for much longer than you'd ever need it to. Um, so slid over a bit, I think is scooched. Keep a cool head. So coo. What is this? Typecast in a way or a hint of full. Yeah, I don't have no idea what that is all about just yet. Does this work still? This down in short order, anon sort of a slightly archaic or quaint way of saying quickly, anon. Feels that like you see it more in Shakespeare and other um, plays of that era, as well as poetry, more than you do in ordinary life. Yokohama drama. So this is a Japanese dr dramatic theater form. No, no drama, NOH. Made like an artisan, could be crafted an artisan. And customized for... Oh, gear two, I see. Right, okay. If you uh, have a mechanism and you gear it to somebody, you're customizing it for them. So here we have Baseball Hall of Famer Mel. I want to say this is Ott. It's come up before, I think. Uh, not 100% certain, but that also seems like the most likely name, to be honest. It's got to be a vowel, and at doesn't look right. It, at, it, at. None of those look better than ought, so I think it's that. Okay, Rockefeller or Getty? They're both, uh, were they both oil barons? Maybe. I mean, they're extremely wealthy, which is, I think, how they're most best remembered now rather than for the source of their wealth. But I think they were, there might be another um, rebus going on. So consumed, fed on maybe, as in food, geezers and fogies, old, old coots. So here we have another rebus with that same COO. So you, you never know with a rebus at the, at the start, even if you determine there is a rebus, you don't really ever know if there's going to be one consistent group of letters that's entered into the cells or if, it's go if they're going to be different and thematically related. But in this case, at least with two being the same, I suspect all four of them are going to be the same. And I say four because of our revealer that indicated four squares in this puzzle are connected to the theme. Oh, so how are plans coming along? What's cooking? That, that got a lot easier with that rebus. So thumbs up. A-OK, -okay maybe? Blank, Cruces, New Mexico, Las... 
Uh, there's an article for you in Spanish, <laughs> not a pronoun. Uh, cutting could be snide, as in cutting wit, if you snide comment. A summer setting for New York City, NYC, and it's an abbreviation because we see NYC abbreviated. Um, so in the crossword, when you see setting, this is certainly not always the case. Sometimes setting in the crossword refers to a place, a location, where something is set. But very often it refers to a time zone. And in this case, in other words, a setting for your clock, for instance. And in this case, in summer, it would be daylight savings time. And in New York City is on the east coast of the United States where the time zone is eastern. So it would be eastern daylight time, EDT. I'm such a meathead. This would be dough, I assume, an ex exclamation of frustration. And here we have drop off would be nod off, which looks right to take a little nap. So DOH, brand with a snow-covered mountain on its label. So anytime I see now even a remotely longish answer, I'm going to be wondering if it has a COO in it. Brand with a snow-covered mountain on its label. Um, that rings a bell. I can almost sort of picture the logo in my mind, but I can't bring to that same mind what it is. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it without crosses, so we'll come back to it. Gymnast on Time's August 2nd, 1976 cover with the headline, She's Perfect. I don't think I have a single idea about that. So knockout, could be TKO, total knockout. No, actually it couldn't be because we'd be using the same words in the clue. So it could be knockout as in awe. I mean, it could be knockout, literally knock someone out. Um, it could be to really amaze somebody, to awe them. Let's try the awe and look at it. To be in a red state, perhaps. So. The perhaps, I think, is doing some work here, as they say. Um, to You might think, especially from an American cultural context, that a red state means a right-leaning state of the United States politically, but I suspect what this actually means is to be angry, to be seeing red as, as bulls don't, as we now know from that crossword recently. Uh, but, I, but I'm not sure what, the, what any of this is, so I'm going to delete what I had there. A pokey, I think, is a could be a jail. Could be either an adjective meaning slow, or a slang term for a jail. So it could be a can. When you see it, if a clue is itself slang and is indicating a, a synonym, generally speaking, the answer will also be a slang term, as opposed to the non-slang version of the thing. So knockout could be awe in that context here. And then not used to could be new to. Yeah, so being a red state is, no, wait, that's not awe. What is being a red state? Oh, maybe, oh, a different meaning, yet a third meaning of red, to owe. So when you're in the red, you owe money to someone, where, as opposed to, well, not necessarily owe money to an individual person, but you're, you're losing money you, as a, as a company, you might you might have annual losses, for instance, but as an individual person, you might owe somebody money as opposed to being in the black, which is being cash positive. Okay. Oh boy, I'm worried that this is going to have a rebus and I just have no idea who this person is. I'm going to have to rely on crosses, surely. TV monsters catchphrase. Oh, my color changing mug has gone almost completely black. I started with it already, losing some of the, the hot white color. Okay. TV monsters catchphrase. This is probably a Sesame Street character. That would be my guess. But I don't know. I can't bring to mind what it would be. A meathead adult, perhaps. Yukon, for instance, could be a territory, the Yukon territory. One source of global warming, coal, maybe? Just guessing with the crosses and the O there. What is that? If this were... Oh, I just don't know. I have no idea. Rockefeller or Getty. This does look like oil to me. Um, its atomic number is 18, so that refers to the periodic table of elements. So this will be an element, but I'm not enough of a chemist to be able to look at five letters starting with a T or, uh, what, seven letters starting with a T and including COO but probably five letters starting with a T. No later than informally. 
I don't know. Not used to could also be new at. And then no later than would be till contraction of until. And actually, yes, it does say informally, so that seems likely. Boy, new at is a, I do not like that phrase, but it's fair enough. Makes sense. Political journalist Berman. I actually have no idea about this one. Constellation re resembling a harp. Is that Lyra? I want to say. Resembling a lyre. Mongols and Mughals, for example. Well, they both had empires, so maybe it is lyre and not. Uh, well, I'd want that to be an S because it has an and. So maybe I'll just leave that empty because I'm not sure yet. Oil, oh, oil tycoon, Rockefeller or Getty. Great. I'm always really relieved when I can get a get a rebus, one more rebus in because it, it removes additional rebuses that might trip me off, trip me up on something much more difficult like, like this one. Although at this point, I think it's pretty unlikely there's a rebus. I mean, you wouldn't imagine in this name a rebus to be here. Kui with an I doesn't look like anything. So it could be here actually, conceivably. Coco. Oh, yeah, it doesn't look right. I don't think there is one. And that wouldn't, that'd be pretty tough here. So don't think there's a rebus there, at least. That's something. One source of global warming. This does look like coal. And then consumed is eight. So I don't know. I'm just going to need to get the cross on the monster's catchphrase. I hope I can get that. I'm sure I will with enough crosses, even if I don't recognize it. What participles shouldn't do? What participles shouldn't do, I should say? Um... Oh, dangle, a dangling participle. Is that, for instance, when one says, that's where I'm going to go to, is to a participle that is dangling at the end there? I can't actually remember what that grammatical convention is. I think it's actually not grammatically a rule that participles shouldn't dangle whatever they are. It's more of a sort of convention, but I can't remember specifically what that means, but I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments. Anyway, a brand with a snow-covered mountain on its label. Oh, I'm just not recognizing this at all. Let's move on. Maybe I can't, maybe I'm not recognizing the thing I'm thinking of. I think there must be a few brands that have essentially this kind of thing. Doesn't Patagonia have that kind? I can't remember. Anyway, easily tamed. Uh, I'm not sure offhand. Winter coat. Not sure. Current event. Uh, it could be something relating to electricity, electric current, because of that pun indicator, that question mark there. To tie down securely could be to lash something to something. Uh, this is not in any way making this any more familiar to me, this brand. Uh, what is this? Actor carry you. Not sure. John of Scots. Oh, Ian. Uh, meaning this Scottish name that corresponds to John. Excerpt. I'm not sure. Tick off. Could be to irk somebody, to tick them off, or to... Yeah, it could be irk. Let's check those crosses, see if that helps at all. Um... Easily tamed, I don't know, demure, benign, none of those fit, obviously. Um, I don't think demure is good anyway. I don't know. I mean, this might not be Irk. What is this again? Oh, is this Cookie Monster? Me want cookie? Ah, and then that would give us the Rebus, and then that would that fills this gymnast, Comanesi, Comanechi. Me want cookie. There we go. Great. So now I have all four coups taken care of. Whoops. What did I put oon in there? That was completely incorrect. I'm sorry. You probably saw me do that and were e yelling at me to notice my mistake, which I didn't. Uh, coon. There we go. Oh, that, that makes this a lot easier. Coors Light. I was thinking of, I was trying to think of, um, oh, I think I read this as lapel, not label. I'm sorry. You were probably also yelling at me about that. I made a complete hash of this entire 49 across here, including that cell and everything else. I was thinking of um, uh, sort of active wear, but of course that sort of clothing wouldn't have a lapel. So I don't really know what I was thinking of. Thinking of. <laughs> the whole thing was a disaster. Okay. 
What was this again? Oh, Asians, Mongols and Mughals, for example. Okay. Flat liner. And we've got a question mark there indicating a pun of some kind. Flat liner, a liner that is flat. Not sure. Excerpt. All right, we have, we have our revealer here with our theme. So this is one of those cases where the revealer doesn't help us solve the theme. Actually, it did, it did a bit, actually. It, it gave me a clue that there might be a rebus because we were dealing with four specific squares. Um, but we're going to have to sort of work backwards into what the revealer itself contains. Current event, right, flatliner. I mean, it could be current as in um, tides and currents in an, in an ocean, for instance. Ebb tide, no. Okay. Oh, actor carry you. Now that now that I don't have that ridiculous oon there, which was ludicrous. Uh, Len carry you sounds sort of familiar. Incite. Current event. Boy, that looks like electric something, but I'm not sure. Okay, tech release of 2010. Is that when the iPad was released? That's four four letters. Coffee go with a donut, perhaps. And I think this is this is a, a completely accepted spelling of donut, but it's less formal than the version of donut that spells D O like bread dough. And I think there's a there's a very subtle indi tip of the hat indication in that direction with go with, which is itself it's not an abbreviation or a contraction, but it's a slightly informal usage of language, just as donut is a slightly informal spelling of donut, even though both of these things are are not con contracted or abbreviated in, in a conventional sense. I mean, I suppose this version of donut started out as a contraction, but at this point it is a word. Okay. That's just sort of, I think, good, solid construction. You know, I mean, you don't necessarily need that, and it doesn't, it's not incredibly load-bearing but it's just a, it's, it's a good construction. It sort of slightly points your brain in the right direction, I think. And I always appreciate that sort of thing. Okay, writer of two down, writer of odes. Um, not sure, I wish I recognized, I wish I got that right off the bat, but I'm not. Okay, let's keep looking. Uh, China's Shu on Lei, battery ends, anodes, oops, ah. There we go. Like a flag on a windless day. Um, droopy or saggy or uh, not flat, sort of the opposite of that. Um, I'm not sure. Scratch out, eke out. So not scratch out as in to sort of rub something out or, or draw over it, but rather to make a, to sort of scratch out a living, for instance, in a, in a colloquial sense, to eke, it out, eke out a living. Oh, a winter coat is an anorak. There we go. Um, anorak, the kind of, you know, it's sort of a windbreaker, I, I guess, with a sort of hood. And here in the UK, it's become a slang term for describing a sort of um, bit of a nerd. I think most traditionally a train watcher who would wear that article of clothing. Oops. Okay. Easily tamed. Oh, docile. I think that was the word I was trying to, trying to reach for in my mind with with demure, but I just couldn't land on it for some reason. Sometimes that happens to me and it's always very irritating. <laughs> Doing dinner and a movie at home, say. Oh, cocooning perhaps in a, so the say, I think also indicates that, uh, doing dinner and a movie at home, say. It's, it's putting us in a, in a bit of a slightly informal posture, cocooning. If one is not, not duped by something, one is onto it. And its atomic number is 18, it must be Argon. Uh, and then Ber Ari Berman. Ari is a name, so that works fine. Current event, oh, I see, El Nino. So it's a weather event in this case, dealing with wind currents, not water currents. And this is a, um, it's a big wind event. It's a big deal in Southern California where, where I grew up. Um, it's a wind event. <laughs> it doesn't really need, I don't remember the specific, uh, reasons it occurs. Anyway, to incite something could be to egg it on, to encourage it to, to happen, to inflame. Typecast in a way, right. So what is this? 
not sure, follower of Spellman, dot. That dot is pretty important. So it's actually a web address, dot edu. And we can, we can infer that it's a school from our, obviously from our crosses du. That's cool. I don't think I've seen that before, actually. The, that, that's so interesting. It looks so weird with that period or full stop there because obviously the convention in New York Times crossword cluing is not to end these with a period because they're generally not sentences. So it's that, I saw that and my brain had a little strange reaction because I wasn't sure what it was getting at. But a web address, that's quite clever. Oh, pigeonholes. Oh, pigeonholes. Very clever. So coo is the sound a pigeon makes. Coo, or a dove, which <laughs> wasn't until I was an adult that I learned that pigeons and doves are exactly the same animal. Okay, so writer of two down, oh, oh it's a poet. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Very straightforward interpretation of that. I, uh, I was trying to think of a poet with a four-letter name ending in T and couldn't off the top of my head, but it's simply a poet in general. So an excerpt, oh, is a passage, an excerpt from a book, a passage from a book, for instance. A flat liner, oh, an insole, so a liner in a shoe, and a flat one, an insole. If one made a touchdown, one a lit, one landed. Masterpieces, um, not sure. Website for 20 across items, crafted items. I jumped to here because I assume this will be a plural with an S, and it is Etsy. And award for a great play. I know this from the crossword, in fact, is SB, awards given on the ESPN uh, channel, which is a sports network in the United States. And then here we have like a flag on a windless day is limp, ah, and then masterpieces are gems. That makes sense. So there you go. All right. Well, I, uh, in some ways, it's sort of fortunate that I had rebuses on the brain today. Why did that come up? It came up once because because the uh, puzzles in the Discord were explicitly stated not to have rebuses. And then, oh, it came up again with a different meaning of rebus in that viewer comment left on the uh, on yesterday's video, of course, right. And then when we saw a hint to four squares in this puzzle, I didn't necessarily have a strong assumption that that would refer to a rebus, but it was hard to imagine what else it could be really, actually. The more I think about it, the more I think it would be very difficult to have four squares referred to in this way without there being a rebus. Because you could imagine four squares in the puzzle spelling something. You know, you, you could spell cast or something, see if there were a C here, an A here, an S here, and a T here, but you'd need some way to indicate, you'd need these puzzles to be circled or shaded or something, probably circled if they were individual cells, um, so that you'd know which squares you're talking about. And here, I mean, there's nothing like that in the grid. We can see it right off the bat. So that does suggest when this refers to four squares, there needs to be a way to distinguish these cells that isn't already given to us. And I, I suppose another option could be, and I don't think we've seen this on the series so far. I've only seen it maybe once or twice ever, but sometimes you'll get something like a number in in the grid. So, uh, you know, the I don't know, you could have an answer that's something like the chosen one or something, and the clue could be something about a kind of literary trope or whatever. And then the one, instead of being spelled out O-N-E, would be the actual digit one, and then the vertical cross would, you could imagine it either using one or, well, I don't know, who knows, but in any case, that kind of thing happens. Or you could imagine it, let's say, actually being a rebus for O-N-E, and that's a bad example because that's just a rebus again, but <laughs> in any case, uh, there, are, there are ways that you can fit unusual things into cells to distinguish them. Um, but a rebus is probably more common than any of those. Still not very common, still quite uncommon, all things considered, but it does happen. And it happened here. I enjoyed it. Let me know how you fared. Let me know if you had trouble uh, getting to grips with the rebus here. I know that the first time I did one of, I did a puzzle that included a rebus on the channel, there were quite a few people in the comments who said, I had no idea that this was even possible in the software, which is fair enough. Uh, you know, the word rebus 
it's just this ambiguous thing floating around here. Who knows? I mean, I, you know, if I hadn't been solving these things for ages, I would have no idea what that is referring to. So yeah, let me know how you fared with this puzzle. Very curious to know. Uh, so there we go. That was the Wednesday puzzle by Jules Markey. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. That would be great. Then you would see, it'd be great for me, but it'd also be great for you because you'd see these videos as they go up on the channel each day. And um, if you particularly enjoy this series, and like I said at the beginning of the channel, at the beginning of the video, if you would like to help contribute to the success and sustainability of this series, head over to the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve, and you will find ways to contribute anything from just a couple of pounds or that translated into your local currency, I think, uh, all the way up to higher tiers, including some that involve recognition on these videos, because I am extremely grateful to uh, everyone who's backed the Kickstarter. But today, particularly, sorry, the Patreon, I have to break that habit. But I'm particularly today grateful to Jordan Larson and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Hood Monster, for your support. It does mean a lot to me. And thank you to everyone else who has backed the Patreon campaign. And thank you to you for watching this video and making it all the way to the end. I appreciate that as well. Uh, I hope you join me tomorrow for the Thursday puzzle. Now, we've already gotten our something sort of wacky in a theme today, and it's not even Thursday yet. So could this augur maybe a more straightforward than usual Thursday puzzle to compensate? Or does this mean Thursday is going to reach new heights of madness? I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. So I hope you will see with me. Uh, please do join me tomorrow for that. But until then, have an excellent rest of your Wednesday. Take care. Uh -huh.